Hello guys, you are welcome to um, another lecture for the matrix exponential. Uh, we've covered introduction and a motivation and a definition for the matrix exponential. We've looked at a special case when uh, the matrix A is a diagonal matrix. Uh, so here we are going to continue with the case of a nil potent matrix um, and then uh, later on we'll to take a look at the case where you have you want to compute e to the at using so-called generalized eigenvectors and then we'll look at this later okay now so what is a ideal potent matrix uh, if you have a square matrix b such that b raised to the power k uh, is equal to zero where k is some integer then the matrix b is said to be nil potent to see why that is important so if b is nil potent it's easy to show that b to the k b to the power k plus one um, and so on will go to zero, right? b to the k plus one can be written as b to the k multiplied by b, but b to the k is zero, and so this also goes to, goes to zero. Now, why that is important is this. If b is nil potent, then uh, the matrix exponential is no longer an infinite series. It's truncated because b to the power k times with b to the power k, b to the power k plus one, and so on. Will now go to zero because of this and so have that now if r is a scalar we can write um, a to be equal to r i plus a minus r times i we can write it as this of course this goes so it's easy to see this and so we can expand the matrix exponential e to the at as this quantity all right what it means is that if a minus r i is nil potent then this quantity here right uh, is truncated and so it's much easier to compute this so let's see how we apply it now before we do we need uh, this so-called uh, Kelly Hamilton theorem it says that every n by n constant matrix satisfies its characteristic equation what does that mean if given a matrix a which is equal to this if I compute the character characteristic polynomial of it which is given by this basically find the um, determinant of this is equal to this equation which goes to zero this theorem says that I can replace my R's here with the matrix A and of course uh, where I see a constant I can multiply by the identity matrix so it replaces with A and this must also go to zero where the zero here is a zero matrix so that's what it says you can check you can plug in A in here and um, show that the result is equal to zero. So that is how um, you apply this theorem. So we see how, how that, that is useful uh, shortly. Now, if you go back to uh, equation one, um, if I have a matrix A and I compute the characteristic equation or polynomial of it, and it's of this form, where R1 here is the eigenvalue with a multiplicity of N, then if I apply the Kelly Hamilton theorem, what it means is that I can replace R with A, uh, R1 multiplied by I, and this quantity will go to zero, right? This then, um, this then vanishes. If this goes to zero, what it means is that what is inside the bracket here is nil potent, all right? If it's nil potent, then from our equation one, I have this quantity here, uh, which is the same as e to the r1 times t. Now, what is in bracket, I can use the definition of the matrix exponential to expand this, to expand this quantity, all right? Because a minus ri is nil potent, I get a truncated series because times with the power n will vanish, power n plus one and so on will vanish, and so I just have this truncated series. What it means is, if I want to compute uh, a matrix exponential, all I do now here, I just have this, I, I compute this, compute the subsequent terms and add them up and I get a matrix exponential. Okay, so here's an example of a three by three matrix. We want to compute the matrix exponential of that. So the first thing is compute the uh, polynomial, the characteristic equation. If you do, uh, here, these guys should actually be straight lines. These are straight lines, it's not a matrix. So you are computing the uh, determinant of this. If you do, you get this, which you can simplify to this expression here, 
which means that we have an eigenvalue r is equal to 1 and it has a multiplicity of what? Of 3. So by the Kali Hamilton theorem, I can replace r with a and 1 here with my identity matrix and that vanishes, which means that a minus i is nilpotent, okay, with the integer is 3. So if I put it back into the, um, into the equation, uh, this equation here, right, the third term, the term with the power 3 vanishes and subsequent terms will vanish, okay? So if I do that, I'm going to have this expression, i, a minus i times t, and then a minus i squared, t squared over 2 factorial, because 10 to the power 3 uh, and above will vanish. And so I just have to compute a minus i, a minus 1 squared, and put it here. And then I get an expression for the exponential. That's what we're going to do here. So a minus i is this. a minus i squared is given by the product of this, which is just 0. This is purely coincidental, OK? It's not because of nil potency. And so we have a minus i squared, a minus i, put them back into the original equation there, this previous equation. And then you have an expression for the um, matrix exponential. So the next thing we'll look at is uh, what happens if there's no nil potency. Then that is where we are going to use the so-called generalized eigenvectors. So in the next video, that's what we are going to do. We we'll use uh, generalized eigenvectors um, to help us compute the matrix exponential. All right. Okay. So. Um, I would uh, I would uh, I would discuss this in, uh, in another video because I want to I want to stop here.